An initiator born from war, KO, one of the most unique agents that shares a ton of similarities with Duelists. KO comes equipped with scanning utility, flashes, and suppression to force fights on his terms. Now, this battle bot is built to stand against the best team comps and is extremely versatile, which is easily one of his main strengths. So today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know about this agent, and we're also going to showcase some gameplay from the best Radiant KO players to help you understand the agent even better. By the end of this video, you're going to have every tool you need to pick up this robot yourself and perform with ease. So let's get started. Starting off today, we have the robot's fragment. This ability is an equipable molly-like ability that, when landed, will last four seconds and tick four separate times. It can be left-click thrown to cover large distances or lobbed with right-click to clear out angles close to you. The fragment ability does 25 to 60 damage per tick, depending on where you're standing inside of its radius. So keep that in mind while using it. So let's go over the ability's strengths, as it functions a bit differently than a standard molly. Fragment does a lot of damage, dealing near lethal damage in the center of its radius. This means that it can be reliably used to finish off opponents on low health and is great as a deterrent to block off choke points the enemy is trying to push through. This ability also is amazing at flushing, sometimes better than standard mollies because of its huge radius and its ability to hit players underneath where it lands. So, if there's an enemy trapped in an angle, you can throw your ability to force them to either take a panicked fight with you, where you'll be ready, or sit in the fragment and just lose. Another great application is using the frag to stall post-plant by utilizing lineups, or by just throwing it at the spike when you hear the tap. This isn't as good as the other mollies, as it only lasts 4 seconds, but you can still use this if you're trapped behind a smoke or want to knock a few seconds off the spike. Post-plant lineups and throwing this ability at the spike don't need to be nearly as important as the radius is so massive on-the-fly lineups are super easy. A small tip is that it is nearly impossible to defuse the spike half once this molly is thrown. The spike takes 3.75 seconds to defuse at half, so if you land a perfect molly, it could just save you the game. This ability is a quick killing molly variant. It's great for quick damage and lots of pressure with the amount of area that it covers. It functions great in wider areas where standard mollies would usually fall short due to their smaller radius. And to be completely honest, the KL molly isn't the greatest in the category of stalling and damaging mollies, but it does have its place in its small quirks that set it apart from others in the throwable set of abilities. Now. Tell me if this sounds like you. You watch all these aim guides telling you to dead zone and counter strafe and aim train, but nothing seems to fix your aim. Chances are you're heavily overcomplicating the process, and that's where we come in. Our courses at Skillcapped are designed to simplify the game into stupid simple terms so that literally anyone could start climbing the ranks. It's like if you were just given a checklist to start top fragging in Valorant. Wait. <laughs> Actually, it's exactly like that. Recently, we broke down players like Shroud's aim into a simple six-step method that literally any player could follow to start dominating their matches. Aimers like Shroud have spent thousands of hours perfecting their craft to get to the point that they're at today. Now, the problem is most of you don't have that kind of time to get good at Valorant, and we get that. And the game really isn't exactly too fun when you suck either. We understand that part too. That's why we put in the time to simplify the game for you so that you could focus on the things that actually matter and climb as fast as possible. Don't just take our word for it though, because we also offer a rank improvement guarantee. So if you don't climb the ranks, you simply don't pay. This is our promise to you that our product really does work. So check it out using the link in the description below, and we'll see you there. Flash Drive is the ability you'll see talked about most often, as it's quite powerful and extremely versatile. All it is is a flash, an ability that simply blinds the opponent and teammates. It can be chucked with left click or lobbed with right click, enabling a multitude of different ways to flash for yourself and teammates. Now, this flash has a huge amount of freedom. It's one of the only flashes that has a wide array of lineups you can learn to make completely unreactable flashes, meaning you can have perfect flashes that are impossible to turn from, allowing for great setups with your team or just by yourself. We're going to show off a flash line 
line up later, but first, it's important to recognize how far the flash is being thrown into the enemy's perspective. If you throw it too far, it'll go past the angle, give the enemy player a lot of time to react to it, and sometimes it'll be so far into the angle it won't even flash them. So how do we throw this properly? Well, honestly, it's simple. You want to practice this a bit, but all you have to do is get the flash to pop as close to the angle as possible. This is going to allow you to complete a half turn, turning the flash and peaking the angle the enemy is holding, gaining the advantage on the angle you flashed, and killing any players who were in bad positioning. It's good as a standard flash, simply because it flashes anyone that's staring at the angle you're about to peak. Rather than guessing where the enemies are, you're simply making the angle you're about to peak safe. This is a bit tricky when you start, but this is much better than banking them off walls, giving the enemy an eternity to react to the flash. It's also much better than throwing the flash too far into the angle, causing the flash to not even blind the opponent. Remember, close to the corner wins you fights. You don't always have to flash this way, but as a standard, if you don't have lineups or aren't flashing for your team, use the corner pop flash as a standard way to flash using KO. There is a timing to these flashes that you'll get a feel for for yourself. Right click flash pops after one second, left click flash pops after two seconds. Mastering these timings are going to allow for you to flash and peak with the flash, unpeak as the flash pops, and re-peak the angle. Notice how before the flash pops, you can see it popping as you unpeak. This allows you to shoulder into the angle and gather crucial information you're going to need before your swing. Having insight into the general locations of enemies prior to your swing is so important when actually committing to a swing. There's also the KO backflash, which is essential to mastering this agent. All it is is throwing the flash opposite of where you're going to be peeking, so you run up on the angle, throw the flash behind you, and swing with it as it pops. This allows you to be peeking the enemy while the flash is popping behind you, meaning you're able to fight before the flash or even as the flash pops. Backflashing will also force the player you're fighting into a difficult situation. Either stand there and eat the flash while trying to fight you, turn away from the flash and lose to you, or try to run back to cover. Basically, it's a great flash, and you should incorporate using this often when you think throwing a flash at a corner won't work too well. The back flash and the corner flash are the two main ways you're going to flash for yourself in gunfights, and they'll both usually be accomplished via the use of a right-click throw. The left-click flash is generally used when flashing for teammates, which you're going to do often. Generally, you'll see high-level players utilize lineups to accomplish this, so let's see how. This flash specifically is used to flash your teammates aggressively into deep A main on ascent. Using this flash in tandem with a jet dashing up or an aggressive play from a couple teammates can land you some very free kills. It's nearly impossible for anyone holding A main to react to. Flashes like this exist on every map and they're super easy to learn. We recommend players that genuinely want to learn KO pick up a few of these essential flashes as it's going to drastically change the way they play with their teammates. Having a few of these flashes in your arsenal are going to greatly increase potential team play and win you crucial rounds with some pretty free picks. Next on our list is the Zero Point. This is KO's signature ability that resets on a timer of 40 seconds. This is his primary clearing ability, and is the reason that KO is a bit weaker in some areas than a good portion of initiators with drones, as you don't get direct vision on close angles. Zero Point, once thrown, is going to display the amount of enemies detected in the radius. The radius does go through walls, so this can be helpful to prevent it from getting shot. Now, on top of displaying the players in the area, it also suppresses them for a total of 8 seconds. This can be great for or a few things, so let's check out attack first. On attack, landing this ability, also known as KO Knife, on the opposing sentinels will turn off all their tripwires, aimbots, etc., allowing for a much easier site execute. It's also great for determining how many players are on a given site at any moment. Lineups are great for KO Knife also, as it can optimize the amount of the site it covers and can optimize the position to a point where it's very hard to shoot. Another great use for this is taking away weapon abilities such as Jet Knives, Chambers Operator, or even Raises Rocket. 
This can be great if you're trying to attack a site that these players are holding, forcing them to use a weaker gun, in turn giving you a great window of opportunity to hit the site. Taking a look at defense, you're going to generally see players knife outside of A main or B main at the start of a round to gather information for their team, helping to determine where the attackers are planning on hitting. Do be aware that at the higher levels, players will catch on to your knife timings pretty quickly, so it's essential you're staggering your timings of the knife and mixing up where you're throwing it. Don't just knife outside of B main at the start of the round every round. The enemy team will catch on if you play it like this and take advantage of it by faking pressure or waiting out the knife. If you catch five players outside of A main, it'd be smart to move a player towards A to help. If you catch one or two with the knife outside of A but still have presence at B main, just keep everyone where they're at, as it usually means the attackers are spread out. KO's knife is an essential tool in his kit, and it's amazing for general intel gathering. It can also be used to help shut down a push, preventing the enemy players from using their utility to help them push onto site effectively. Just know that, unfortunately, this replaces a standard initiator drone, which isn't an amazing trade-off, but the knife definitely does have its perks and shouldn't be slept on. A lot of players are going to say that KO is weak because he doesn't have a drone, but you can use him as a duelist with some clearing utility, rather than just a primary initiator just fine if that's your worry. For our final ability, we have the Null Command, which will give him the Overloaded effect, which increases his fire rate 15%, giving him a 10% buff to reload speed and 10% to his recovery speed. This ultimate lasts for 12 seconds, pulses once every 4 seconds, and has a massive radius that's going to expand and suppress any player players caught in it, preventing them from using any of their abilities. This also is going to allow KO to go into a down state rather than dying, in which you'll get 850 HP on the ground and can be revived by a teammate if they hold their interact button on you for 3 seconds uninterrupted. Null CMD is amazing for executes, as it allows you to completely shut down any sentinel that's caught in your radius, helping your team push onto site almost worry-free. Alternatively, it's amazing for retakes, as it allows the exact same fast retakes while suppressing the enemy team, allowing you to also have two lives if you go down in a safe position. It's even great at shutting down pushes. If you're stuck on site and want to buy your team some time, you can completely disable the enemy's abilities and essentially act as a drone after you get down, letting your teammates know all their positions. While Null Command is a very simple ultimate, it's very powerful for executes, retakes, and holds. A large drawback to this that we have to talk about is that it's very easy to pinpoint exactly where KO is when his ultimate is going off. So make sure you're not using this in a 1v1 or any situation where the enemy isn't aware of your position. This is the main drawback to KO's ultimate, which means it's great when used in large chaotic pushes and retakes rather than in small 1v1 gunfights that rely on positional advantage over chaotic ability fights. Let's take a look at Judgment, also known as Eli, a Radiant KO main who I had the pleasure of having as my number one duo on Valorant Flashback. He really pushes KO to its absolute limit when he picks up the character, and it's a great example of what you can achieve with a large amount of time played, personal skill, and experience on KO. This first clip is just a small example of how powerful the corner flash can be when used to swing through smokes or walls. In this clip, you're going to see Eli right-clicking a smoke as a corner flash and turning it as it pops, essentially combining a back flash with the concept of having it flash close to an angle. This forces the enemy to eat the flash and lose the fight in a complete blowout. No matter the level, it's nearly impossible to react to flashes thrown with this level of precision. This is the true power of a high-level flashing KO. Generally, you're going to want to have flashes be as unreactable as possible, giving you the largest advantage you can have over the players you are fighting. Here's a clip of me and Judgment completely controlling A main together and using our utility in tandem to shut down a push. In this clip, we can see Eli throw a knife at the A main wall right as the enemy is about to push onto the site. This suppresses the enemy jet, allowing for me to land an easy kill. Judgment then attempts to control the smoked area and ends up taking out the enemy KO player. He also deals with the enemy Reyna as we attempt to set up a crossfire. From here, we both cross into the smoke to secure a clip as we're both insanely greedy players, and I flesh left out of the smoke for Eli to allow him to jump into wine and deal with any players in that area. I then proceeded to swing right knowing that my KO duo will trade me if I end up losing that fight, which I do, and he lands a pretty free kill onto the last player. 
In this round, Judgment had the better weapon and only had his knife for utility. We took advantage of the fact that we knew Jet would be pushing in first, and he then threw that knife right when Jet was preparing to dash in, allowing us to deal with her for free. The two pieces of utility we had between us, one flash and one knife, were used perfectly to secure two essential kills. Let's take a look at our final clip of the day. In this clip, we see Judgment throw a perfect lineup onto A side here and secure one kill with the burst from his fragment. We then see him throw a flash to cover his push through the wall. Once he confirms nobody's looking at him, Eli proceeds to bank a flash on the ground to perfectly land in front of the player under sight. He runs up with his flash and turns it just as it pops, securing yet another free kill on the fade player. KO is an initiator, but you really should look at him as more of a hybrid between duelist and initiator. The robot has amazing utility that enables him to take a very aggressive playstyle through the use of backflashes, quick movement, and quick clearing via the use of KO knife. KO can easily take up the mantle of a secondary duelist if needed and can be easily supplemented with the use of double initiator if you really need droning utility to play around with. By watching Judgment, you can easily see how he takes this initiator and turns him into a duelist through the use of crazy aggression and well-timed flashes. All right, though, guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Cap. So we offer a five division rank up guarantee, and we think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's kind of like a gym membership guaranteeing you that you're going to get ripped. Your local gym would probably go bust if they offered you that. But not us, because we've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium Valorant guides on the internet. We add new courses every month with over a thousand guides curated into over 50 courses. No one can compare. We also have a direct line of communication with subscribers in our Discord so that you can get connected immediately to some of the best players in the game who will respond to every question you ask. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you're serious about improving your game. So that's going to be all for this one today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.